What's up, guys? So I am back with another programming walkthrough for you today, which is pretty much a series where I walk through my current training sessions and I give you the thought processes about why I program the sessions the way that I do. Today, we will be looking at my pull B session. So I have a pull A and a pull B, and this is pull B. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So first thing that you'll probably notice is that the first exercise is not a traditional pull exercise. This is a seated cable fly. So the reasoning why I'm doing a chest exercise at the beginning of my pull workouts is the same exact reasoning why I'm doing uh, lat exercises at the beginning of my push workouts right now. So if you did not watch my last program walkthrough video, then go check that one out. Basically, the reasoning for it is I am only training push and pull every six days right now. So I like to do a little bit of pull work on push days and a little bit of push work on pull days just to make up for that extra frequency. Otherwise, I would only be training my chest and triceps every six days. And I just don't see any situation in which training a muscle that infrequently is going to be a superior option than hitting it more frequently. So I prefer to just do... Uh, the pull work in the push session at the very beginning and the push work in the pull sessions at the very beginning and just get that shit over with so that I can get into what really matters. Speaking of what really matters, let's get into some actual pull work. So my, my main lat movement right now is this single arm hammer strength low row. Uh, the reason why I choose this one first is is a, there's a couple reasons for it. The, the main one is that this is obviously a hammer strength machine. As I mentioned in my last video, hammer strength equipment has a, has a design flaw. Well, some may say it's a flaw. Some may say that it's a perk. Just depends on how you program it uh, in the sense where a lot of hammer strength equipment overloads the shortened position. So it gets really, really hard to complete the rep. And because of that, I like to do as much of my hammer strength equipment work at the very beginning of the session because the the muscles that I'm using in these exercises will be fresh and so it will be easier for me to actually get the muscle short and take advantage of the fact that the hammer strength equipment overloads in the shortened position. Basically how I'm thinking uh, about fatiguing a muscle is I want to fatigue it in its fully shortened position first uh, and then I want to fatigue it through its mid-range of motion, which is where I do the majority of the work. And then I want to finish uh, a muscle off with something that focuses on the muscle in the stretch. So we've got all three parts of your range of motion. We've got the fully shortened, the mid-range, and the fully lengthened. And I just like to focus on each one of those individually. So this uh, particular row is a great one to start off with because it overloads the short. And I just want to knock that one off uh, right in the very beginning. From there, this exercise exercise has like a ridiculous name, uh, the bilateral mag gripped D handle pull down. Uh, it, it's very, very simple. Bilateral just means two and one. So I'm using two arms instead of one. The D handle just means that I obviously have a pair of D handles on this mag grip. So uh, the name seems confusing, but it really isn't. This is a, a pretty straightforward exercise. Uh, this has really been the bread and butter of my lat training over the past I would say probably six to eight months is these types of chest supported cable pull downs, whether I'm doing them single arm or bilateral, how you see them here. Uh, the contraction on this is really unexplainable to me. The I just get such a, a much better contraction in my lats than any other pull down uh, that I've done. So pretty much how this works is I will stick on this exercise until uh, it, it fails to progress or it stalls when I'm doing it bilaterally here and then I will switch to doing it unilaterally, so just doing it single arm. And then I'll run the single arm variation until that one stalls and is unable to be progressed, and then I'll switch back to the bilateral form here. And I'll just keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I, I don't particularly think that one is better than the other. Typically, I prefer unilateral stuff when I'm training my lats, but uh, with this particular exercise, the way that the handles line up with my lats and my shoulders, uh, I feel no difference between a bilateral version and a unilateral version. So it just really depends on how I'm progressing at that point. 
Uh, this second working set here is actually the final working set for my lats. And, and as I just got done mentioning with the hammer strength row, I like to finish off a muscle by focusing on its fully lengthened phase. So what I hope you guys are noticing here is how long I am pausing in the fully stretched position before I initiate my next rep. Uh, what you guys are actually watching right now is this video sped up in two times speed. So I'm actually counting a five count in the fully stretched position, which each of these reps. Uh, so I'm, I'm spending a lot longer than what you guys are actually seeing here. Hopefully you guys can tell that the video was sped up right here. Uh, it's eventually going to get to a point where it goes at normal speed and you will be able to uh, see what a rep looks like there. It's actually coming up right here. So starting right about here, this is normal rep speed for me. This is what all of those reps looked like. So look how long I am spending in the stretch before I initiate the contraction for the next rep. Uh, and I will just continue to do this set until I can no longer longer initiate another contraction and basically to me that means that I've I've completely taxed the muscle from its fully shortened position uh, you can see I, I can't do another rep so I've I've pretty much fatigued the muscle fully in the stretch so I would say at this point top to bottom my lats are fully toasted and so this is where I like to move into my upper back work so I'm starting off with another hammer strength row I'm actually back on the same exact machine that I was doing the low row on but I'm doing these high rows here Again, my upper back is relatively fresh at this point in the session because I have been training my lats only and I haven't really retracted my scapula a lot. So my upper back musculature is relatively fresh here. And so while it's fresh, I want to challenge it by hopping on this hammer strength uh, plate loaded row because again, hammer strength equipment overloads in the shortened position and I want to train the shortened position right now. So I want to take advantage of it. You'll also notice how long that I'm pausing at peak contraction, which is just really me doubling down on training the muscle in its fully shortened position. This exercise is really, really fatiguing and it's really hard to get short, which hence why I'm only doing one working set. I always find that if I do another working set on that hammer strength high row, that second set uh, just has a hard time progressing and it's never as good as the first one. So I like to just limit my volume there to one set. Uh, after training my upper back through the horizontal plane with a row, I like to train my upper back through the vertical plane with a pull down. And this is actually a new exercise exercise for me. If you guys couldn't tell by the caption there, my last rotation, I put NA there. That's because of this video that you guys are watching is actually the first attempt that I did on this pull down. I was doing uh, an upper back pull down on the cable stack previously to doing this, uh, but that was just kind of beating the shit out of my elbows and forearms for a while. I I've talked about this a lot on my TikTok and Instagram, but using these straight bars that don't move and don't allow your wrist to swivel, as you get stronger and stronger on your lifts, they just really beat your elbows to shit. And so one of the great things about this particular pull down right here is you can see is that the handles are diverging. So they're actually spreading apart as I'm coming down towards the bottom. This gives me a crazy contraction in my upper back, but it also is alleviating a lot of stress off of my wrist and elbows because my wrists and elbows are allowed to move in a natural motion. They're not locked into place like how they are with a straight bar. So this was a, a massively needed uh, program change, swapping out from this cable pull down to this by uh, uh, this diverging pull down, excuse me. Uh, not only is the contraction a lot better and do I think I'll be able to have a larger scope of progression, uh, but it's, it's healthier on my joints as well. Typically after I do that pull down there, I go into some shrug work on a hammer strength plate loaded uh, shrug machine. But in this particular pull session, I am training uh, legs the day after and I'm doing RDLs in that pull session. So I decided to skip my trap work today. Uh, I did not want to go into my RDLs with sore traps and erectors because on the hammer strength plate loaded shrug, you have to deadlift that fucker up to be able to do your shrug. So I did not want to fatigue my hips and my erectors and my traps and then the very next day go into RDLs because that would have just led to a pretty poor RDL performance. So I just decided to skip my, my shrugs here. If I had not been doing RDLs the day following, I would have done them. 
Uh, and then I typically get into the arm work here. So uh, two sets on this shortened focus cable curl. Uh, again, this is a whole new movement for me. I had never done this one before uh, this particular session. I actually took this from Nick Gloff. Uh, so th the way that I am positioned in this particular uh, cable curl is positioned in a way to where the, the tension overloads on the bicep in the fully shortened position. Uh, and as I've probably repeated a bunch of times now when I'm signing, sounding like a broken record, you want to train the muscle in its fully shortened position while it's fresh. So while the biceps are fresh, I am training them uh, through their fully shortened with this particular cable curl setup. Uh, I'm spending a little bit of time in the fully shortened position on the first set and not as much as, as the second. Uh, and then from here, I will do one more set of bicep work and I'll be doing these dumbbell preacher curls. Now the dumbbell preacher curl is actually the exact opposite of the shortened focus cable curl that you guys just saw. This overloads in the lengthened position position. So it's a great uh, dumbbell curl variation to finish with. I only did one set of this today, but when food and PEDs go back in and I finish up this diet and I get back into bulking, I would like to add a second set here. I definitely think that I can progress and recover from two sets on this exercise, but for the first time of me doing uh, a new program for the arm portion of, of this particular pull session, uh, I just wanted to start off with one and see how one went before I added in a second. I would rather start low and build up than start too high and, and have to pull back down. Uh, speaking of pulling back down, uh, cross body cuffed tricep extension. So this tricep extension has not really been worth a shit for me the past couple times that I have done it. Uh, I, I tied reps one rotation, I lost a rep another one, and then on this one I lost another half a rep. So uh, it's just not really uh, a feasible exercise right now. I'm not taking a lot of progression on it and it's not the most comfortable comfortable one to do. Uh, so the next time that I come in and I do this particular pull session, I will be doing a different tricep isolation exercise than this one. Uh, I got this one from Hunter Labrada and I, I just gave it a few rounds and a few attempts and I just never really cared for it a whole lot. Uh, you guys are going to see my, my total session volume here on the bottom. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Oh.